It's just a smorgasbord. But these guys just go nuts over all of it. That's actually the first time we've got them in. Amazon meat fish. African tiger cat. Super friendly, not totally not bitey fish. Probably should mention the arowana. Today we're checking out something fishy in Orlando, Florida. You don't want to miss this one. So I'm here with Jacob at Something Fishy in Oviedo in the Orlando area. And they have been so nice that they got a, a fish order in today. So we're gonna go over and take a look at all these fish. They acclimate their fish pretty interesting. So we're gonna take a look at that. And then as you can see, they have tons and tons of stuff, fresh and salt. We're gonna focus mainly on the, the fresh today. We're gonna start back here at the back of the store and then work our way to the front where we were. Um, so talk to me a little bit over here. One of the first things I noticed was some bigger fish down here. Are these some trade-ins or something? Or are these just- uh, We're holding those for a, uh, a customer that had an unfortunate mishap with the tank. Uh, so we're just holding those until it gets this tank reestablished and everything like that. That's pretty cool. I like that, man. I never, that's, that's pretty neat. That's pretty cool that the local fish store will do that. Yeah. And then this side of stuff, we're going to start with a little more more aggressive stuff, some more cichlids, and then we'll work towards more of the, the community fish as we get more towards the front. The first thing that pops to me, at least, is the Red Texas. Uh, whenever we got him in, he was a trade-in. Uh, we originally thought that he was a Carpentus because he has that nice model color. Uh, but he started to color up more and more red, and he just keeps getting redder every week. So he's definitely got some red Texas in him. Gonna get more discus in. Uh, we get those in from Han Aquatics over in Germany. Uh, we only do quality discus here. That's that's kind of our deal. Pretty cool strain of the uh, electric glue Jack Dempsey, right? Yep. They seem to be a little bit darker in coloration, uh, which is really, really cool, at least for us. Uh, it's not something that you see every day as a, a darker glue Dempsey. So those guys are really cool. Uh, they don't get as big as the regular jacks in my personal experience, uh, but they're still just as colorful and just as flamboyant. Uh, they've got a lot of personality to them. Is that normal you guys carry flower horn in here as well? Yep. We keep at least two or three of those in the store. The wine miller eye, they get them like the long trailers. I don't know, I'm sure a few uh, species that is get these guys, the Heclios. Ah. Geo Heclios. So you'll see, uh, I don't think we actually have to open that one now right there. Okay. So he's got some trailers and he's gonna get really, really vibrantly red uh, along the tops of the fins and that little lipstick area. That's where he's really gonna develop his most of his color. And then those thread fins just keep growing for the remainder of their life. I think you just sold me on, so I gotta get these in there. I don't have tank space right now, but dang, man. They definitely demand some tank space, especially if you keep them in a harem, which I recommend. That way you have really, really awesome breeding action. You throw in a few dither fish, and you got a really, really nice biotope. And then over here, I know there's some really cool fish. One of my yeah. personal favorites are clown knives. Those guys are going to get absolutely massive. Uh, we've had several customers come in, show us pictures. I've gone out to customers' house for maintenances, and they are just beautiful whenever they get about two feet long. Uh, that's typically where you're going to find them, it's about two feet in the aquarium. Uh, three foot is an absolute behemoth for those guys. That's insane. So they are super predatorial, so don't put them with any type of tetra that's going to fit in their mouth. And they will absolutely bust your tank. Uh, they will get big and they will get big fast. What fish is this? A tiger scat? I don't think yep. I've ever seen this. It's an African tiger scat from Madagascar tiger scat. Okay. It's one of the more rare types of scats. It's actually uh, the only freshwater scat. Truly freshwater. Uh, they can go into salt, so they are very daily, but they prefer the tributaries, I guess, of uh, western side of Madagascar. Oh, wow. Is that a, it's like a leaf fish? Yep, that leaf is fish? an Amazon leaf fish. Those guys are going to about three to four inches long. Uh, they will definitely change color on you. Uh, they float, they kind of act like a leaf. That's what they do in the wild. Wow. So they'll just float in the current, you know, doing the thing, just chilling. And then as soon as something small goes by, they hit them. They have this jaw that kind of expands like a, I would equate it to a, uh, a grouper. So they have this jaw that just unhinges from that little bottom bit. And that's what really lets them inhale just really tiny fish, uh, little prey items. They could be little freshwater copepods, little fairy shrimp, uh, neon tetras in the wild. Uh, they live in pretty much most of the Amazon basins. Those are aerolites, are also known as headstanders. Okay. Uh, those guys are really, really cool. Uh, I would put them in the semi aggressive category. Uh, you'll notice that there's no plants in that tank. Uh, that's between the abramites or headstanders and the Buenos Aires tetras. Both of those guys are avid plant eaters. Uh, I'm not thinking all oh, this fish looks really, really cool. I'm going to throw them in my 75 gallon planted tank because you will not have a 75 gallon planted tank. You will have a 75 gallon nothing in about three hours. Those guys will eat any type of plants that get in there. Same with the Buenos Aires. Uh, but the abramites are going to get about six inches. Uh, both species, uh, I don't know how to pronounce 
the first one, but the second one is Equus. Uh, those guys are very, very similar. I think it's only like minor character traits that separates the two species. Uh, but they're going to get about six inches. Semi aggressive, keep them in a small group. Uh, you can pack them in, but they really don't like that as much. Keep them in a smaller group of like five to seven, and a larger tank of 75 to 90. Those guys will really, really enjoy the space. You guys have some nice quarries, man. Some solid, yeah, thick ones. Those are the ones that we came back from. Uh, I don't blame you, dude, because they look almost like the like, as big as the Brokus or whatever they are. Exactly, the Brokus lemons. Yeah, because those are normally those are normally big, but even I mean even they're big, but those are freaking chunky, Huge. chunky. Yeah, that's why yeah. we go to the farm because they don't put those out on the list. So Thanks, guys. Like, that's actually the first time we've got them in. We had a uh, group of fifteen or twenty, uh, and those guys are awesome. You find them a lot in the European hobby, which is why I wanted to get them in for so long. But they're really, really cool. They're also called rhombo so you may go by that as well. Uh, they get about two and a half, three inches, normal tetra barb size. Uh, but they're a really, really good community fish, and I think they make an excellent black water species. Little section here is mostly African cichlids. They have a bunch of the normal African cichlids that you find at every store, but uh, Jake, Jacob here is going to show us some of the more unique and interesting ones they have in. We do have Spinoza, which are one of my all-time favorite fish. They do get massive, though, so you really need to keep them in a. I would recommend a 200 and keep them in a small colony. That's whenever you get the best behavior, the best coloration. Everything about them just screams, put me in a small colony. Another one in this tank is Petricola. That one is a really hard to find fish, at least in this area. Uh, and those guys are just super, super awesome. Really bright colorations for Synodontis. Uh, those guys are just really good for pretty much any style tank. Uh, I've actually had a few of planted tanks and they've done perfectly well. Another really cool set that we have are Tanganyikans. These are just smaller Tanganyikans. And this uh, tank is a little, I'll, I'll, I'll say it for Jacob, this tank's a little messed up because they were hiding and he had, they stirred the, the, the gravel. So he just stirred it up. That's why it's a little messy. We do have a Lelupi in there. Uh, sorry, some Calvis. Another really, really nice one that we don't always have at are Jirapari's. Those guys are phenomenal Central American cichlids, Central style. Uh, those guys are going to get pretty big, about 8 to 10 inches. That's reasonable expectation for those guys. They get really nice coloration, uh, similar to a Brazilianzis. Uh, those guys are just awesome. It's really cool because they're kind of like butt heads, at least. What I've seen, uh, the males will butt heads a little bit, so I think that's part of the reason why they have that little front <laughs> face. Another really cool fish that we have is a pike. I don't know what species of pike that is, uh, but I know it's going to be big, and it's going to be absolutely mean whenever it gets there. Another one is this girl. She's probably my favorite in the whole store right now. So whenever the owner and me went to uh, our fish farm to go hand pick the fish, uh, we do that every so often just to make sure that we're getting good ones and anything that we might have missed during the order sheet, we kind of pick out. Uh, she was one of them. The owner, Lee, was like, hey, what's that fish? And he went to go stick his hand in the tank to turn her around so he could see, because it's a pretty good sized fish. Yeah. And as soon as he touched her tail, just latched right onto his hand. I was like, yep, we got to have it. Is that why this is on the tank right here? Yep. Super friendly, not totally not bitey fish. Yeah, so that's the one fish in the entire store I will not hand feed. I've hand fed sharks, lionfish, stingrays, all perfectly content. Uh, that one I will not because I have a feeling that she's going to bite my finger pretty hard. She will definitely <laughs> drop one. But she is a Paracromus loiselli, and that is the, the smallest in the Paracromus. You guys get libraries in usually weekly or depends or? Every week. We switched it up. This week we got guppies. Uh, so you can notice we're a little light on guppies. So. We get guppies every week. Uh, colors vary. Uh, every now and then we will special order like certain type guppies, like Moscow mules, uh, or Moscow white, sorry. Those are my personal favorite because they're just so brilliantly white. It's like they got hit with a pink hand. It's really, really cool to see some of the different strains that we bring in. Uh, a lot of them are just listed as miscellaneous guppies and we just have to get really, really nice tails. Four bucks, that's, that's pretty dang cheap. And, you know, sword tails for for three dollars, I don't know where you're gonna find a quality, healthy swordtail. And there's some cool looking swordtails. Those are those, uh, those koi, or what kind of swordtails mm -hmm. are those? We did have some uh, vampire swordtails in a few weeks ago. Those are really, really nice. They look like a, a blood orange color. Okay. Uh, those guys are really nice looking. They had uh, double swords on them. We have about two liters of just straight up RO water. Uh, that's what I use to feed pretty much everything in the tanks. Uh, so in it, we have a whole bunch of fishy goodness. Uh, it's got some mysis shrimp in there, uh, some krill, 
uh, some Pacific Krill, okay. uh, Blood Worms, Daphnia, Tube Effects Worms. It's just a smorgasbord, that way everybody gets something. Uh, don't usually do Blood Worms, but maybe like once a week. But these guys just go nuts over all of it. And that food is gonna be gone in like 20 seconds. Thalmo tilapia nasuda. It's actually a Tanganyikan cichlid, uh, but it does really, really well in just larger community fish setups as long as you have the right tank size. Okay. Uh, he doesn't really touch any of the plants, which is kind of refreshing for an African cichlid. Most of them are going to eat them or dig them up. Uh, but that guy is super, super chill with everybody, even the smaller fish like those little panda bars, which are the red ones. Those guys are really, really cool. I showed you, showed oh, wow. you guys those earlier. That's how they look whenever they're all colored up. Uh, Treat them like tiger barbs. They're not fin nipping in that sense, but they really, really enjoy uh, schooling with their own kind. Uh, so you want to kind of crowd them together a little bit more like a tiger barb. That way you don't get that uh, conspecific aggression. My personal favorite rainbow fish are the goiter rivers. Those are the ones with the black fins with the, uh, or sorry, the red right. fins with the black stripe through the middle. Those guys are super, super awesome. I just love their coloration. Uh, that black and red is one of my favorite combinations. So like I love my Rummy Nose Tetras because that, that white, black, and red combination. Uh, it's just a really hard to find, nice combination. And the, the Panda Barbs do the exact same thing with the black and red. Uh, the Rose Lines that we have in there, we got some four of the Rose Lines. Uh, those guys are really, really cool. They dart around everywhere. <laughs> and I see uh, you get the Bosmani, and then what's the, the rainbow that's kind of like, yeah, this guys, guy right here? Uh, those are Marcy eyes. Those are a little bit harder to come by. Uh, they also get a little bit bigger than the rest of those guys. That's the biggest I've ever seen them. Uh, they're super, super awesome, and whenever you look at them face first, they're really, really punchy. We've got some Bala sharks in there. I think we've got four Balas in there. Uh, a lot of people will say, uh, probably not the best idea for a planet tank, but as long as you keep them nice and fed, they usually don't touch any of the plants and they'd rather pick off algae, uh, which is really, really cool. So they'll run around and kind of school with the Siamese that usually stay up on the driftwood and everything like that. Uh, they'll school with the Siamese. They have no problem sharing the same food as those guys. Uh, they'll clean algae off the back, off the glass, wherever. They really are just awesome, awesome fish. We do have an arowana. Yeah, we should probably, probably should mention the arowana. <laughs> There is an arowana in this tank. Uh, that size, he really doesn't touch anybody. Uh, as he grows larger, uh, then we're gonna pull him out. But at uh, that size, he's perfectly content being in a, in a 300 gallon tank. And what kind of arowana is that? Uh, just a regular silver. Okay. We have uh, Hypesa Brycon 511s. A lot of people call them like bleeding hearts or candy canes. I think they're more closer looking to a, a candy cane tetra. Okay. Uh, but those are, 511s. Okay. We have assassin snails, which go out as soon as we get them in, so they're probably going to be gone this weekend. Really? You guys sell them that quickly, huh? Super, super quick. Same with these guys. Oh, panicories? Those are one wow. of my favorites. I've actually got three of them, like 14 over there. <laughs> nice. They're super, super easy going. Uh, pretty much like any other quarry. Uh, no real special care requirements for those guys. Uh, just keep them in really clean water, and we're going to do good for them. What else we got? Uh, did you go with these guys? No. Uh, we got some German blue rams. Nice. Looks like a mix of male and female in there. Now talk to me, that stuff in the bag, that's just uh, to keep them more comfortable, something to get them to cling on? Yeah, it's like a, a surface floating plant in their eyes. Just keeps them nice and calm, chills them out. Okay. We got some those Monty rainbows. Oh, nice. Another hot seller. Can't keep those in. Yeah, you can see, it's nice. You can see the color. Obviously, the fish are still in the bag, and you, you can still see, you can tell the males, they got some color, even though they're obviously washed out right now. But. Yep, super washed out, but whenever they get in your tank, you're gonna look awesome. And then we have... Cardinals. Nice. Those are one of my favorite schools alongside the flood fins. These guys just school so, so tight. It's yeah. a little rummy nose tetra without the sensitivity. <laughs> These guys are awesome. Here we have a new one, at least to us. Uh, panda bars. Panda bars, okay, that's cool. I've never heard of that one either. Yeah, those guys are, I think they're kind of new into the hobby. If they're not, they're new to us at least. Uh, we've actually got a little school of eight into that front tank. I'm probably going to throw some more in there. Some little angels. Nice, right, so some koi angels. Usually get in about a bag of these. These are green set rooms. Okay. Uh, not something that we get in all the time. We usually try and keep them in there. Uh, but those guys are super, super awesome. The only downside is they'll eat all your plants. 
Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So for a plan of tank guy like me, I love those guys, but I would set up a tank just for them. I personally just oh, yeah. think that fresh water to me, it's a, a little bit easier. Uh, it's not as time consuming, even though I'm running two plant farms. Uh, I just get a little bit more enjoyment out of it versus the salt water. I like salt water, but it's much more slow paced. Gotcha. Uh, fresh water, it's, it's a lot of action. It's a lot of nice looking fish and it's just, a lot more fun. Do you have like a ton of tanks at your house or just a few uh, right now? More than my wife lets me have. Uh, <laughs> she set a limit, but I've already gone past it. So we're going to see how far I can push it. I hear you, man. I like it. Another staple. Yeah, those are some nice quality guppies. I was in here for their, uh, they had a three year anniversary sale the other day and they had some really nice live bearers. I mean, all their fish are beautiful, but the live bearers in particular were just really, really good quality. Try and keep it as high quality as possible. That's what separates us from box stores. Uh, and being, I would say, probably the, the biggest freshwater carrier in Central Florida. I don't know if that's a little boastful of me, but I think that's that's what separates us from places like, uh, you know, just the big box. Talk to me about these systems because you were explaining to me how each three going horizontally is in one system, right? So yeah. those three is on one system, and then the middle three will be on one system. Yeah. The which are on one. So essentially what they're run on is really, really, really big sponge filters. If I can pull this one up, it's got some hornwork growing in the back. Okay. So they're just really, really large, oversized sponge filters for everything. Uh, they're constantly got fish in them, so the bacteria never goes out, I guess. Uh, but they get daily water changes. It is 18 minutes of a water change. Uh, on the later systems, the pressure seems to drop a little bit, so it doesn't get a whole lot, maybe about 25% every day. Uh, but for the rest of the systems, it's like 50% daily. Uh, that's how we keep it so clean. It doesn't look like crud. Uh, all the tanks are really clean because of that. To keep in line with your you know, your good quarantining process and cleanliness, you're, um, you guys don't just plop and drop fish. You actually use these these down here, correct? Yep. So explain to me a little bit about your your, your acclimation process when you first get uh, new fish in. Uh, so initially, uh, we had these all floating in the system to get them used to the temperature. Uh, we don't throw anything in the tanks without getting used to at least the temperature. Uh, we drip acclimate pretty much everything here. Uh, that can range from 25 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on the sensitivity of the fish. Just like that. So we're going to do that. And if we want to walk over here and grab these rainbows right quick. They've already been sitting in the tanks. We don't put anything into our tanks without at least acclimating them to the temperature first. Set it in. And then... These are the albino quarries? Yep. And then we will grab one of this. It's essentially just a little IP drifting fish. Oh, that's cool. And did you guys, is that like a DIY thing you guys made or? Uh, no, you can DIY them. Uh, okay. But these are made by Innovative Marine. Okay. That's cool. So quarries are not too terribly sensitive, at least for us. Uh, these are all Florida red quarries, so they're used to our water. Uh, for stuff like auto cats, that's whenever I would acclimate for like an hour. These are probably gonna drip acclimate for 25 to 30 minutes. Just like that. And those guys are acclimating. That's fantastic. I've never seen a fish store acclimate like this process. I think it's fantastic. You know, a lot of people doing the plop and drop. I think it's awesome that you guys take the additional time to, you know, acclimate them temperature and then even do a little bit of a drip. Later. Thank you so much for taking us on a tour and showing us all the fish. You know your stuff, definitely. If you guys are in the Orlando market, uh, definitely check you guys out uh, in the Oviedo area. Monday through Saturday, it is open from 11 to 7, and then on Sunday, it's from 12 to 5. All right, thank you guys so much, Jacob. I appreciate you, man. No problem.